Hello. I'm talking about challenges in end-to-end -end IT automation, uh, end-to-end -end automation of IT processes, a uh, more organizational theme, uh, not so technical for today. My name is Jochen Kellner. Um, something about myself, my current role is being a service architect, uh, service architect. Um, formerly, I was SAP Basis Admin Team Lead for a Basis Team, and I'm working right now for a large IT system house. Um, our environment has lots of SAP systems, large SAP systems, lots of users. Is right now a very volatile environment. Uh, we have upgrades, we have conversions, we have system copies, you name it. And also a factor what we need to uh, be aware of is the security of our systems. Um, the agenda I've prepared for today is uh, first the motivation, why I think it's a good idea to talk about what we do with IT processes. We'll have a short look at what we consider uh, IT processes and we will see that uh, lots of things are not IT that we do. Um, I will talk about the challenges we are right now facing. Um, we will discuss some solutions. Uh, you see the question mark. Um, this is still kind of research what we are doing. Um, I will look at the things that will block us, that are impediments for us, and we'll have a really short wrap up at the end. If you have any questions, raise your hand and we can talk. Otherwise, uh, also at the end. Um, the motivation that we have is that IT systems are getting more and more complex. More systems, more diverse environments. Um, we have less people doing the work. Um, if we look at the workforce, lots of people are nearing the retirement. Um, and from our customers, we see more work um, required to get faster, to deliver systems faster, to do upgrades faster, uh, just do more work. And what we see at work is uh, that we have a large organization and we see that the Taylorism that we have divides the tasks in many, many small tasks and that way we have to switch a lot between the teams and that's something that really uh, push, pushes us back. Um, the rough estimation that we have if we change the processing agent for a manual task in a change, um, you can more or less count a day uh, before the task gets done, even if it is a 10 minute task or, or, or whatever. And behind that, uh, we see that the workflow or the, the task distribution can be, uh, can be optimized for execution time, so the whole workflow uh, gets done in, in a short time. We can optimize for throughput or for utilization for the workers, and if you really optimize for the uh, utilization of the workers, you have a large, large backlog of tasks uh, and the flow of work through the organization takes a really long time. And that's something that uh, doesn't help to get faster. I will short look at IT processes. Um, if you look at ITIL, um, there is a change process defined. Um, there is a request for change that is uh, created from the customer or internally or from an incident or whatever. Um, the change is organized, is planned, is approved, uh, and then from the request of change we have a change. Then we really do the technical thing that we want to do. And finally, the change gets closed, the document 
the task gets documented in the change tool and the requester gets a message that this change is finally done. And often we have tasks that take a couple of minutes on a system and we spend uh, twice or, or even four times the time needed to do the change just to create the whole IT change process. And that's really bad. Another view on changes is that the technical change that we see is, from my point of view, more or less a solved problem. We have change management tools like SALT, like Ansible, Jeff Puppet, you name it. And that enables us to get changes on IT systems really fast and really reliable applied. Where we are currently working on is how can we change our IT processes so that we can leverage the better tools and enable us to shorten the IT processes for us, means the idle processes. Um, what we also have in lots of changes is that we need to update the configuration management database, some admin tools where we uh, manage DNS, uh, reserve IP addresses, uh, and so on. And what we, as a service provider, really need to do, in my point of view, is that we need to think along the whole process from the customer giving us some work to do until we finally get the result back to the customer. And that's something that is really, really hard because we have lots of teams, lots of silos, and that is something that we need to work on. And finally, a thought about IT processes, how do we measure if a, if a process is complex or not. There are lots of things you can measure, you can try. Nothing is really applicable to all the changes that we see that are really, really different for us. Sometimes you can just count the manual steps in a change, you can count the agents that are working on a change the processing time for the steps, uh, the work needed. Uh, this is often some other time than the processing time. Um, what I kind of like to measure is uh, the size of the data that I need for processing the change. Um, we've heard uh, two talks ago, uh, ago um, that it's often better to have all the needed information at the start of the process and you can tailor the rest of the process uh, so that it fits and you don't have, oh, here is some data missing, um, I don't understand what you want from here and something like this. And for a server installation, I found years ago uh, a simple quote just uh, how many forms has the requester to fill to get a server installed in their uh, data center? And that can be really, really horrible. So, what are the challenges that we need to overcome to get better at IT service processes? First of all, you need to get cooperation from all the parties that uh, are stakeholders in the processes. And this is really, really difficult because everybody has his work and has no time. And no, we have just upgraded our system or the next upgrade is just before us. And no, we can't currently think about changes on our processes. And what we've done the last couple of years was to uh, to get seeds uh, 
when we talk about, yes, we have the problem, let us see if we can sometimes in the future maybe talk about that. And what we see is that a couple of years later, some of these seeds uh, really bring fruits for us. And if another stakeholder just gets to us and says, oh, we are thinking about a new tool or another process that we want to implement, we use the opportunity. We go in the discussion and, and really talk about what we together need to do to, to get better at that. The thing that has, from my opinion, the most impact is to get all the needed information from the start so that each agent really can start his work, don't need to search for something, have questions, uh, whatever. Just do your work and everything must be ready to do the work. For automation, if we look at that, it's really useful to have the data structured so that we can use scripts, uh, configuration man management, to use the data, work with it, and, and work on the systems. What we have right now is lots of Excel sheets, lots of manual prosa work descriptions that's not really helpful to do automation. So we do a lot of work to get data structured at a central place so we can use it for automation from the different teams and work together with the same data set. That is also quite a useful thing. Um, when we talk about a change or a service request um, or a process in general, there are some points that uh, define that. It's a start it's a defined input, what needs to be available to do the task, predefined steps, so it is clear what needs to be done. Finally, an, an end or an, an end date, and hopefully a reproducible, reproducible outcome. And if I look at our manual processes on the IT systems, the start is probably okay, but the input is often not as good as it could be. The predefined steps are mostly working, but not every time. And reproducible is really a problem for us. We talk about, we are doing all the same. We, have, we are standardized. Um, but, but our standard is everybody just does it like like he likes it, like he does it, like he likes it. So, what we are hoping to get someone sometime is that we can use the request data that the requester, the customer stores uh, in the change or somewhere else, to use that directly into the automation. But, of course, we need to verify the input, so does the host name exist, does the SAP system really exist, uh, is it the right release so that uh, the change can, could possibly work. And what we also uh, have in lots of changes is update documentation in the CMDB, as the configura Configuration Management Database. And that's right now a manual process for us that is error prune and uh, that shows uh, that our CMDB is not as good as we would like it to have it as a base for more and better automation. <clears throat> so that's something we are looking at to get the CMDB better. And if we do all this right, the question is, do we need an idle change? Or if there is a service request and every data is correct and the service request gets handled automatically and locked and can be audited, do I need a change? 
if we can answer that question with a with no we don't need a change a lot of manual work for planning organizing and and working with the change can just vanish <clears throat> and that's something we are looking at the solutions we are thinking about we try to make manual tasks and processes vanish so in the past we did a change to just configure a system to update a software to roll out a script whatever and every couple of months we do the same change over and over again what we are now doing is let's make a change to implement an automat that can do the task whenever it is needed so the whole ITIL process just vanishes for us. What we need to do is have logging so that we can look at the system and see what has been done to the system. What's also useful but needs cooperation between the interested parties is exposure of APIs so that we can use the APIs instead of manual processes. For example, uh, right now, when we do DNS configuration, uh, we have a web overview, uh, web interface, and you just make a service to request to add an IP address and, and a DNS name for it. And a day or two later, you get a mail, oh, the request is fulfilled, thank you very much. If you have an API, and most of the tools right now have APIs, and we can use them, it makes it really, really easy for us to get the information that is already there, that we have machine-readable, um, just put it into the system that's needed. What's also from the um, implementation a really good idea was the configuration management tools with the desired state. So you describe how you want the system to look like at the end, what is the end result that we want to have. And whenever we apply the salt state, the Ansible play, whatever, um, if the system is okay, it's just okay. So it's idempotent, it doesn't make uh, any problems, and, and that's really helpful for our automation that we can just push the automation and say, hey, is the system as we want it, then it's okay. And that's something maybe uh, when we're working with APIs that we need to think about how to make the APIs uh, also idempotent. And what we currently do is Excel Ops, I, I call it that. Um, we do lots of lots uh, of lists in Excel, uh, what systems, what software, what configuration, whatever needs to be done. And the Excel is uh, sent around, put on the change, whatever. A um, couple of years ago, I heard a talk at the FrostCon uh, and there someone presented GitOps as a concept and that's a whole new thinking in the GitOps uh, world. You just make commits in a Git repository which describes your complete IT infrastructures. Maybe uh, your VM needs more CPU, more RAM, whatever, and you commit the change, you push it, uh, your IT infrastructure recognizes there is a change, looks at the infrastructure and forces it into the way you wanted it to be. That's something that's for most of our people is right now unbelievable that such thing can work. And that's something we work on to get the people thinking about uh, automation, think about 
what processes are really, really useful, what helps us, and what is a process that we don't need anymore because we have other tools, we have lots of things learned in the past, and that's something that takes lots and lots of small steps, but each of that, these steps uh, helps us to get, be get better. So, what is an impediment for us? So, what takes us away from, from our goal? A uh, really big one is the institutional inertia, Beharrungsvermögen um, in Germany. And that was a couple of years something that was just uh, in, in beton, in, in concrete. So, it was almost impossible to get changes done. But what we are seeing um, due to the smaller workforce uh, and also uh, from our management is we need to change. We must think about automation. We must think about our processes. We need to get better. And so we see that lots of our uh, colleagues are thinking about these things, maybe not as we like it, but uh, the thinking starts to change and that's a good sign for us. The next thing uh, that really doesn't help for us is whenever someone needs a defined list of servers, just uh, give me an Excel, just give me the list. and. Uh, this is something I want to change because the list, at the time I, I store it on disk and send it by mail or whatever, the list is old. The systems have really changed in, in the past so fast that it doesn't work to, to store copies of the list. So we need to use uh, our CMDB more um, to have selects in the CMDB that tell us Oh, these are really the systems that we need to think about. Another problem that we had is that lots of people do their processes from their inner view. What information do I need to do my process steps to get my um, goal, my 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 goodness, my my finish. So what we also try to change is to look at the processes from the requester. As a requester, I just want to get a server. I don't want to talk about capacity management, IP address management, backup, whatever. I just need that server. So if I can provide all the information needed to produce a server for me, the processes in the background can just work, of course. We need a capacity management, we need a pay address management, but it's nothing that the requester needs to do in a ping pong with every stakeholder that there is in the company. And this ping pong, this uh, takes a lot of time and, and questions and, and, and so on. What we also like to change is manual data entry, often in Excel or in other tools. If we have the information already, we should just use it and, and make APIs, interfaces, whatever we need to, um, to do that. And what's really, really horrible is duplicate data entry. If we do process, produce a new server, I have no idea how, how often I type the host name and the IP address. That's at least uh, more than 10 times, I, I guess far, far, far more. So that's something we need to think about, that we have a single source of truth and can work from that. But to get that in a large uh, IT infrastructure, that's really, really hard. 
So I, I was pretty fast. Um, the wrap up, what, what are the, the, the main points from my point of view? As I already talked, the technical automation, this configuration management, this APIs, this uh, whatever you can think of, is more or less a soft problem. What we've seen in another talk today is we have the tools, we can just move the tasks around, maybe turn the process uh, from the bottom up to get a better, uh, a better result at the end. And that's a key point for me. We have lots and lots of tools, we just need to use them creatively and uh, can can have success, yes. What I think is really helpful is remove manual processes, manual steps. These are error prone, they take a lot of time and most of the steps don't produce any value for the customer. So at each time someone takes a pen or a keyboard and does something manual, that's something we need to look at. I had a presentation with a description, manual work is a bug. That's something that maybe describes how to look at, at these. You have a bug, you can lock it, you can work on it and maybe solve it. Or maybe it takes a long time but you can rethink the task and, and, and work around it. What I guess will help us is use existing data instead of re-entering in it manual in the first time in free form text in a word formulas, formulas or something like that. That's something we need to work on to, to get that reduced. What's really, really helpful for the processes we had is get all the information first. Take your time to get the host name, the IP address, the network, the whatever you name it, if you have it completely defined and then you can push it into an automat and it can just work it out. So, and this is also true for manual processes. If you don't have all the information ready for a manual processor, he calls you and asks and you need to talk and wait and, and whatever and, and that's not good. On the other hand, you need to know what are the needed informations. If you don't know that, you will always hunt around and, and, and waste time. And what's also useful for us is to fail fast. We have lots of changes running for a week or two and just as the last day of the required time is over, someone gets back to you and, oh, I just look at the change and I see this information is missing. If we could get this feedback earlier, it would make us lots faster. And also, fail safe, just not do something that is stupid, just call and, and say, oh, that didn't work out, just let's talk. The key takeaway I've defined for me is what I want to do with processes in the IT, first eliminate. A process that isn't there just doesn't produce work. And if I come to the conclusion I need to have this process, then I can think about to optimize it, to rearrange the steps, to make the interfaces between the um, agents faster, something like that. And finally, once you have a process that is defined, that is reliable, then we can in the end automate it and let the the computer do the work that's not really helping the customer to get the value from us. So, 
that's from me. Do you have any questions or remarks? Um, you mentioned on uh, slide six, on the last point, that uh, if I remember correctly, one should, uh, thank you, <laughs> align processes along the core value chain throughout the organization, which I completely agree with. A big challenge I see with that is can, can one really bring all people aboard? Because that also means that anyone in different functions needs to understand how the value chain for that organization looks like. Do you think, how much of that do you think is feasible or how in particular would that work? You won't get the whole view defined. If you have a look at the um, process analysis that has been done in the 70s or 80s, there has been lots of people thinking about processes, how to document them, uh, and also how to optimize them. So we are late for the party, I think. Um, and that's a whole rabbit hole of work. From my experience, you can get two teams together, maybe a third one, and work on the interfaces between these teams and get something useful done. If it gets much bigger, I guess um, you have another problem. Um, no, that was there. You need to uh, saw the seeds so that people can start thinking about it. And once they are ready to to talk about it and, and think, oh, maybe we should think about it, you need to get a critical mass. And that's really, really difficult to get more than two or three teams together that are able to change now. Yep, right. I fully agree. I can say that also from my experience I have the same. In my position we are sometimes the one requesting and relying on others as well as being the one that is being relied upon and then we are trying to bring people together and you know form that seeds. But I must say one must be really patient to grow that over a long time to work out, right? Yes, it's <laughs> take a lot of patience, but um, if I look back uh, the last two, three, four years, the patient begins to pay. So we see the change, we see the motivation to talk to each other, to have a look at the processes that we do together. So, yes, it takes a lot of patience, it takes a lot of repetition to always talk about, we want to do that, this is the tools we have, we can help you, we, we, let's look at the interface. And small steps help. If you have done three, four small steps, um, it's a leap, yes. So, uh, yeah, yes. Oh. I just need a minute to get an announcement afterwards. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, thank you for listening. Thanks for the question. Um, hope you can enjoy the rest of the conference. So, thanks again. Thank you.